Some of you say you enjoy a good exercise in futility. Well, this may be the biggest futile workout of our lives. Can you run an NES entirely from AA batteries? Well, let's break this down. The NES needs 9 volts and at least 850 milliamps. It also officially takes AC current in a stark contrast to most computer electronics that take DC current. The original NES AC adapter indeed outputs AC, making it very incompatible with DC devices, even of the same voltage. A AA battery, on the other hand, provides a pretty measly, in comparison, 1.5 volts and always DC current instead of AC. At a glance, it would seem the two are destined to be incompatible, right? Could these two components truly work together? Well, yes, at least in theory. To explain how, I'll need to break this down further. Firstly, while the sticker says AC and the original power adapter outputs AC, the internal electronics still use DC like anything else. The AC current passing into the NES goes through a rectifier which converts the AC into DC for the rest of the system. But what happens if you pass DC through the rectifier instead? Duh, absolutely nothing. The DC stays DC and the electronics get what they want. As I mentioned, you should never plug the NES's original AC power adapter into other devices. Even though devices like the Sega CD have the same voltage and plug size, it is firmly a DC input only. However, since the NES has AC to DC circuitry built into it, it can actually take either, meaning you can theoretically use any 9 volt DC adapter like the Sega CD's to power it. So, as it turns out, DC batteries are actually A-OK -okay for running the NES. But what about that dang dirty voltage? How are we ever going to get 9 volts out of 1.5? Well, as you probably know, most devices don't run off a single AA battery. Even remote controls usually have at least two. It turns out that batteries can be connected together. Specifically, they can be connected together in a way that combines the voltages. In this case, adding 1.5 volts for each battery. Simple division shows that for a clean 9 volts, we would need a total of 6 AA batteries, provided the batteries are connected in what's called series. Let me explain. Connecting batteries in series adds the voltages up as demonstrated. This is done by connecting the batteries plus to minus like a human centipede. And since when we do this, we using the entire potential of each battery at the same time, the capacity for all six batteries will actually be the same as just one of the batteries. If you were thinking having six batteries would give us six times the capacity, that would only be the case if we were connecting in parallel, the other way of connecting electronics to each other. This is done by connecting all positive terminals together and all negative terminals together, essentially splitting up and sharing the load between all of the batteries rather than combining all their power into one output. This will give us six times the capacity, but the voltage output will remain at 1.5 volts. Since we need that voltage to add up, these batteries must be connected in series, so this experiment will only last as long as one battery will. How long is that? Well, it's all down to the batteries themselves and their capacities measured in milliamp hours, which is basically a measurement of how long it can provide a certain amount of milliamps. Let's say our batteries were 850 milliamp hours. Since the NES is 850 milliamps, this would mean the batteries would last for exactly one hour. If it was double the capacity at 1900 milliamp hours, it would last for two. On average, low-end zinc carbon batteries only have about 400 to 900 milliamp hours, meaning only about 30 minutes to an hour playing NES. And after that, all six batteries are gone. Yikes. Alkalines at about 1700 milliamp hours to 2850 milliamp hours would last more like two to four hours, which is why they're usually called super heavy duty. But this is just an experiment, not a serious attempt at playing NES without access to power. <sighs> Come on, do I really look like the kind of guy who would go outside? So for now, I'll be sticking with some cheap boy low-end zinc carbons, just for the experiment. Technically, to connect the batteries, we could just solder directly to the terminals. But that feels like a bad play, so I got this battery holder instead for us to solder to. That should make things way easier, except for one thing. It didn't actually say whether it connected in series or parallel, but from the looks of it, I'm fairly certain it is in series. But just to be sure, our first step will be putting the batteries in and checking the voltage that comes out. Well, let's get started. First, we'll obviously need to open the batteries. Oh man, d -d -d double wrapped 
<laughs> Guess I gotta open these too. You know, all this plastic is, is probably great for the environment. Alrighty, here we go. Have you ever seen anything more beautiful? <laughs> no, 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 I already know the answer because you're seeing me right now. <laughs> Oof, I feel like Thanos popping in the stones. But, but you know, less plans of murder. Alright, not bad. This may be one of the simplest builds yet, but I guess I technically cheated with the battery holder. Now, much like Thanos' glove, this thing is technically live and dangerous right now. We gotta be careful not to let the positive and negative wires touch, or else they'll start releasing power as fast as they can and things might get ugly fast. Alright, that should do it for now. Let's see what kind of voltage we get from this. Whoa! Holy sh**! Not only are they definitely connected in series, we're actually getting a little more voltage than expected out of this. You may be wondering if this nearly 10 volts is actually safe to connect to the NES, considering it's rated for 9, but 1 volt difference generally isn't enough to cause problems, and plus the NES's internal voltage regulator, which does exactly what the name suggests, is rated for up to 18 volts. So maybe the regulator will run slightly warmer to compensate for the higher voltage, but it won't damage the internal components in any way. Plus, under some actual load, the voltage may drop down to around 9 anyway, so really nothing to worry about here. Okay, almost done! It's time to solder an NES DC plug on. I'm gonna take the batteries out while doing this because, well, obvious reasons. Man, this thing holds on tight! At least we don't have to worry about a bad terminal connection. Thanks to the holder, soldering this thing will be a piece of cake. Specifically, delicious, creamy, ultimate red velvet cheesecake. Ooh. Oh, right, NES. Literally all we need to do is solder these two wires. And for the NES, once again, in stark contrast to other electronics, it doesn't even matter which wire we connect to which terminal because its rectifier will automatically produce the correct polarity internally. Isn't that amazing? Other than that, we are 100% Gucci. And here's the finished setup! It actually looks pretty good for a really quick job. There's no real need to check the voltage again, but I'm gonna do it anyway just to be safe. Yup, back at it again with that 9.9 .9 volts. I think we are ready to go. And now for the star of the show, please welcome back the Nintendo Entertainment System! While we're introducing fan favorite cast members, why not the old VGA monitor and VGA adapter to test this out? Alrighty, everything's plugged in except for the battery pack. Alright, no sleight of hand, I'm gonna plug in the batteries and turn on the system. Hopefully we don't see any magic smoke. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Holy f bro. I just want to reiterate, there is no AC going into this thing. The only power going to the NES is coming from those six AA batteries. And it's actually working. And actually perfectly. I'll admit, despite all that technical explanation of why this should theoretically be possible, even I was still kind of skeptical that it would actually just work. It's official, I'm playing Nintendo off nothing but AA batteries. My life has never felt so complete. Now, let me reiterate, I said it was futile, and it really is. You're not gonna play the original NES on the go, you're not playing it in the doctor's waiting room, it's way too bulky to be considered any kind of portable, and wherever you go, you're gonna need a TV to connect to as well. And even if you did carry around a TV and an NES, as we established, it's only gonna last for like a few hours at best anyway. You'll be spending more on double A's than it would take to buy a Switch, or even an iPhone eventually. Well, maybe not that much. So yes, this is cool, but definitely very pointless. So, we've officially established that the NES will happily play off a bunch of double A's, but the big question that remains is, for how long? As I said, this will largely depend on the specific batteries you use. Once again, Wikipedia's average was that these would run for about 30 or 60 minutes under this much power consumption. Still, I'm sure we all want an exact time frame, so it's time to sit here and play NES until it finally shuts off. Skipping ahead, because I didn't want to film for that long, we have our result! The batteries actually did a lot better than I expected. I thought for sure it would last for maybe an hour at most, but it actually lasted for about an hour and 40 minutes. Not quite two, but hey, well over one. Not bad, all things considered. But the most fascinating part is the way in which it shut off. Through years of watching laptops and phones just shut off immediately when they run out of battery, I was kind of expecting this to do the same thing. However, a device that isn't designed to run off batteries and won't necessarily know how to respond when its batteries are running out of power, 
It turns out batteries tend to taper off rather than just die, gradually outputting less and less voltage until eventually it's just not enough power for the device it's running. This is why remotes become gradually less effective when it's time to replace the batteries. So how would the NES react to a rapidly decreasing voltage? Would it immediately shut off or do something else? Well, since I said it was fascinating, you can probably guess it did not just shut off. I was playing Dr. Mario when suddenly the colour started glitching out. Just a little bit at first towards the top, but rapidly getting worse and worse. By the time I started filming again, it was very apparent. The colours were going crazy. Then suddenly the colour shut off entirely. Now it was a purely black and white image, and let me tell you, Dr. Mario in black and white is the hardcore survival mode of Dr. Mario. <laughs> My assumption is the first thing to get hit by the dropping voltage was the composite circuitry, that is, the circuitry that combines a black and white luminance signal with the NTSC chrominance signal, which is why it's now just black and white. Next it started gradually getting a little more staticky. I was kind of regretting using the VGA adapter at this point since I would have loved to hear what the sound was like at this point. The next thing that happened was even crazier, the tiles started to glitch out. Again, only a little at first, but more and more and more. I can't even see the blocks falling anymore, but they definitely are falling because I can see them when they land. I can also still hit pause, or H, B? So the game is still running, just very hilariously glitchy. I guess either the PPU is getting hit or maybe the memory is corrupting. More and more the screen was glitching out and Dr. Mario was becoming very unplayable. Then finally the console shut off as the red power light became dimmer and dimmer. It was actually kind of sad to watch. I know I'm giving human emotions to a lifeless machine here, but it was kind of like watching the life fade from someone's eyes as they die. Sorry, it's kind of dark. Now, supplying too low of a voltage is uh, unlikely to break any electronics, but just in case, here's your official disclaimer, don't try this at home because I don't want to be sued if you break your stuff. <laughs> but you know, there are certainly worse ways to spend an hour and 40 minutes than playing NES on AA batteries unnecessarily while three feet away from a power socket. Subscribe to